I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. ABRSM practical exams are upon us pretty much and so I thought it'd be a good idea to chat about exam nerves and how to deal with them. They're an inevitable part of your exam but it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be dealt with. Now the first thing to think about exam nerves is that it's a good thing. Now that sounds strange, I know, but a bit of an adrenaline boost is a good thing. It sort of really hones in your performance and sort of focuses your attention. And just imagine if you turned up to a performance or an exam and just kind of weren't really bothered and it didn't really matter. I don't think you're gonna really give your best performance. And so a, a good dose of nerves isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, if it gets out of control, then that's when it does become bad because because then it starts to hamper your performance and all of your um, months of practice can feel like they've just sort of gone by the wayside a bit because nerves took over. And so it's learning how to deal with those nerves. And I think the best thing to do is prepare a mental checklist to sort of help you just sort of calm yourself down and work through these issues. And the most important thing to think about is, have I prepared? And then you can reassure yourself because if you know you've done the practice, your muscle memory will be in your fingers, whatever instrument you play, the principles apply. And so you can think, well, it's okay, I know I'm nervous, but my fingers know what they're doing and um, I'll just let my fingers take over and my brain can kind of just sort of step outside of things for a little bit. So if you've got that muscle memory and you know you've prepared, then you can reassure yourself and think, no, I'm okay. I think it's a good idea to decide upon your order of performance within the exam early on and then you can practice within that order so you get used to building up a familiarity and so you're playing things in the order that you would do in the exam. So that's one good thing. I think another good thing is to do a time audit so that you know you really are properly prepared because if you think you've done the practice but then on reflection you've only really done 10 minutes here and there, you might be thinking you've done more than you really have. So you need to be thoroughly sure that you've given it your full and best attention. And so if you find it helpful, I've written out a practice diary for you. You can download that from my website. There's a free PDF if you go to SharonBill.com and you can make little notes on how much practice you've done each day, what you've practiced and so you can make sure that you've tallied everything because you might be surprised to find that you've not really done as much as you thought you had and so when it comes to exams you find you're less prepared than you thought you were. The reason I've done this um, practice diary for you as well is because um, there are lots of things that you can buy and I'm sure you know there's lots of opportunities for different sort of bullet journals and so on. My concern there is that you need to be careful you're not spending so much time journaling and not actually playing the instrument. So just be careful you don't get carried around, around this track of um, colour coding this and charting this and writing this and diagramming this and you're actually spending more time scribbling notes than you are actually at your instrument. And so I've done this PDF as an absolute basic to just give you an absolute time audit and to focus your attention. I think the other thing to remember is that um, you play music. And so you need to project that in enjoyment of what you're playing, really. You know, the examiner isn't sitting there trying to catch you out. He's not there to test you on mathematical accuracy alone. Of course, we need to be uh, on time. We need to be playing in time. We need to be on the pulse. And so there is a bit of maths to it, but it's music. You know, let's enjoy it. And so I think you might as well go large or go home. And so just enjoy your exam performance. Throw yourself in into it, get really into the music, throw yourself into the dynamics and uh, give the examiner a treat and actually you will find that you'll get better marks if you give a really sort of uh, characteristic enjoyable for performance even if there's a few little wrong notes that's okay the examiner knows that you're human it's okay to make a little slip but just keep going and don't let that dampen the performance that is so much better than um, a note by note absolutely accurate bang on mathematical performance but with no heart and no soul so I think the other piece of advice is to just enjoy yourself
A strange thing that some um, professionals do is to help them to calm their exam nerves. They eat a banana. I'm not sure why. Maybe there's some scientific research gone into the potassium of this and that and that will help calm your exam nerves. So by all means, if you think that helps you, if you like them, if you can eat them, eat a banana. Um, you may have some other little um, strategies that just help you with a habit. It's all about a habit. So maybe it's even placebo where eating a banana makes you feel like you've ticked that box. I've done what I need to do to calm my exam nerves. They are all well and good, but I just think be careful eating a banana will not re replace months of practice. So, so long as you've done the preparation, by all means, for that last little piece in the puzzle, eat a banana. But prepare, remember, perfect preparation leads to perfect performance and enjoy it. That's the best thing that you can do. You may as well just throw yourself into it and just enjoy that performance. I do hope that's helpful to you. Best wishes for your exams. I'd love to hear how you get on. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.